Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought you were about Yeah, man, look, I'm, I'm beyond ready. I'm excited. Uh, back in action. Um, had a great offseason, productive offseason. Got a chance to have some downtime like you should with family, friends. Uh, got a chance to flex my entrepreneurship and, um, you know, have a good time, foundation. But also, I kept training first and foremost. I'm um, training four hours a day, um, hitting two a day every other day. So physically, I'm ready. Mentally, I'm ready. Um, I've been close to my scripture, so spiritually I'm ready and emotionally, so it's time to get back to football. Sean, from an X's and O's perspective, the way the last month of last season ended for you was really strong. You seized the job and you've seen that rhythm going. What gives you hope that that kind of thing will carry into this year or can build can be built off of? Uh, yeah, just picking up where I left off. Um, you know, that's I've kept the same type of attitude since I've been here. Um, you know, since I've been in the league, actually, and that's contribute to the team, take advantage when you have an opportunity. And uh, towards the end of the year, I just was blessed with that opportunity to get um, synchronicity and that chemistry with the offensive line, coming back to the huddle, saying what I see, coming back to the sideline, saying what I see, feeling what they feel, and just kind of getting that consistency. So, you know, I'm going to just continue to build on my craft and uh, be ready when my name is called and uh, try to fight and I'll show that I could carry the ball a little bit more. In retrospect, when you, you know, get time to go back and think about it and look at it, why do you think it took so long to get it going to the degree you did? Um, you know, again, it's going back to allowing that opportunity to get that consistency. Um, and I was granted that the last four games. And, you know, if I'm granted that this season, that's how I'm going to run. Um, if I'm granted a couple carries, that's how I'm going to run. Um, so, you know, I'm here to help this team. It's not about me. Um, I'm just a piece of the puzzle. We got a lot of good backs, um, younger and um, older, and vets and rookies. And so it's going to be fun seeing, watching everybody compete. Um, but whenever my name called, y'all y'all know what y'all going to get out of me and you saw the last four games. Do you, do you think it'll be a, an interesting adjustment if, you know, you work with a guy who's your offensive coordinator and now he's in charge of the whole team? Say that again? You know, you worked with a guy then who was your offensive coordinator, and now he's in charge of everything. You know, he's yeah. not, he's, you know, he's, he's the man. Uh, yeah. Replacing a, a pretty important guy here. How, how do you think that dynamic is going to work? Well, you, you can see, so for, for me, obviously, I've had him as an offensive coordinator um, for the last two years, and now about to be a head coach. You know, his, it, the way he commands attention and, um, in, in a room, how meticulous he is, and um, the respect level he has for every single person. You know, he's, he's definitely the guy for the job. Um, but it is funny, though, because <laughs> it's just a personal story. But when you're out on the field and uh, obviously the offense may, something may go wrong or it's a tip ball or it's an interception or a drop ball or something like that. It's funny because he's a head coach, so it's, uh, you're upset because it happened, but you're also cheering the defense now, too. So that's just a funny dynamic to watch a coordinator go to um, a head coach, I'm sure, whether it's offense or defense. But as far as his job as a head coach, he's a man for the job, no question about it. Um, he's in-house. He understands the architect of the team. And um, he knows how to talk to every single person to get the best out of them. What was his message to the team this morning? You know, they were just... We haven't had that, that meeting yet, just yet. Actually, it's at noon. So. 11.55, be honest, <laughs> we're, still on, we're still on that time. Rashad, a lot was running back by committee last year. There were a lot of guys that were you know, in the equation. How much do you embrace getting the ball 20 times a game? How, how important is it for you to be the focal point of the offense? I wouldn't say that. that. I mean, that's not important for me to be the focal point. What's important is for us to win. Um, last time I checked. <laughs> so however I can help contribute to getting a W on the board, uh, that's what I'm here for. But uh, we got a good we got a good group of running backs, and everybody can carry the load. So you know, um, it, it shouldn't be focused on that. It's, it's about team chemistry. Um, everybody playing their role: receivers catching and blocking, tight ends catching and blocking, offensive line catching and blocking, Eli throwing and commanding, and uh, running backs doing their job. So it's it's about the team. It's not about me. Can you have what? a sense of how good this team can be? Absolutely. This team would be really good um, by paper and by talent, you know, that we actually have on this team. So uh, 
Uh, speaking especially from the offensive standpoint, going into year three, we got high expectations. Um, and it's, it'll be a disappointment if, if we don't complete what we're looking for. How is that different from last year, if it is at all? Um, Does it have a different feel around here this year? It, it's a, it's a, it's, I mean, you're going into year three. Like The first time you put in an offensive system, that's what you do. It's a system. The second year, it becomes more of ours. And now it's just everybody understands what we're doing. Um, we can, I feel like, you know, we can line up right now and play a game because we understand the offense that well. Um, with that being said, it's a lot for us to work on. And that's what we're going to do here in training camp. If there's, um, I mean, it could be nine or ten starters from last year on offense back. I mean, the defense has a lot of changes. The offense has not made a ton of changes. Um, is there any reason for you to think that this offense should not set their standards on anything but to be maybe the best or one of the best offenses in the league? Absolutely. Um, that's what you come out for. And <laughs> I, it would be silly if you would think there's 32 teams in the NFL. If all 32 teams are not out here fighting for a Super Bowl or thinking that they could be the best offense, then they're probably in the wrong business. Um, just with us, I think we have a little bit more validity behind it this year. Compared to last year, did you shift weight at all? I mean, do you look, are you thinner or? Them glasses ain't working for you, man. <laughs> you might want to cut them things on. Now, I'm, uh, I, it's all, see, all season, all, I shift weight. Um, I'm still carrying my weight. But uh, I train a little bit differently as in as far as more and is just studying film, watching cuts, watching offensive linemen, understanding the system even more. Um, and I'm built for this offense this year. Do you find something neat about staying on cop one time? Yeah, I think it's a respect um, to somebody who is a Hall of Fame coach and has done so much for this organization. And... Uh, you know, really, really exemplifies what John Pride looked like. And to carry that over, I, I think is an honor to him. And um, I, it keeps us on track, too. You mentioned about how important winning is. For you personally, I mean, you've been on teams that have taken their lumps since you've been here. Now you're a veteran. How much does, does that eat at you? I mean, how motivated are you to, to, to get on a, a winning team and you know, make a run the way oh. I'm sure you've wanted to do every season? Huge. I've never made it to the playoffs ever in my career. This is going to year eight, and I'm definitely not about to say I'm going to year nine without it. Are you guys used to the fact that you've come to work and Tom's not around anymore? Is, that, is, it, is it odd to report today and nobody's not the coach? Or? No, I think we went, you had, we had that moment as a, as a collectively as a team, and, um, you know, I, I'm sure – Everybody in the staff and organization that's been here for a really long time with him um, may feel that, but we understand. And uh, he, he, he's, you know, he, he's a coach that's there in spirit anyway. He understands what's going on. And uh, every single guy out here is ready to compete, fight for a championship, come earn a spot, uh, do it the Giants' way. And so, you know, that's kind of our focus. But, you know, there, there always be. The small laughters and talk of Coach Coughlin in the, in, the, in the locker room and throughout this building. When was that moment? Back in the spring you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that happened back in spring of, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's a new era. And, um, you know, I think you, the way you honor people is to take something further in which they left it. And, uh, you know, I think this organization is going to honor him by continuing to strive to get better. When you, when you say McAdoo commands a room, how do you, how do you mean it? Um, the, so not every single person is, is able to have that type of authority in front of men. Um, I'm sure we, you know, everybody has a job and everybody has a boss and they've changed before. And sometimes you have a boss when they speak, it's like, uh, and then sometimes as a boss you listen to, and, uh, he can command a room full of men and that's, that's huge when you're talking about being a coach in the NFL.